Okay, so uh, now some nice, some more nice questions to do. A little understanding of how some operations affect mean and standard deviation. You give this a shot, and we'll go over it in just a minute. Okay. Um, if 10 points are added to each score in the population, what would be the new values for the means and the standard deviation? Well, look, the mean is the average. So if everything goes up 10 points, then the average is going to go up 10 points. The standard deviation, however, is the measure of the distance from the average. But if everything goes up 10 points, then the distance from the average is staying the same. So for part A, the mean would go up to 90 because everything adds 10 points. So when you average it out, you're going to add 10 points. But the standard deviation would stay 20 because deviation of the scores, the distances from the mean, that has not changed. Everything went up. Okay. Um, letter B says, if every score was multiplied by 4, what would the new values of the mean and the standard deviation be? Well, if you multiply everything by 4, then the mean is going to go up by 4 also, a factor of 4. So 80 times 4 is uh, 320, okay? So every single score went up by 4, so the mean will also go up by 4, a factor of 4, I should say. Now, the standard deviation would also go up because when you multiply across, the distances are changing by a factor of 4. So let's just give you, for instance, let's look a, a quick mean of 80. And then let's look at what happens if we multiply by 4. Um, 60 would become 240. Let's do 60, 80, and 100 as our three scores. 60 would become 240. 80 would go to 320. And 100 would go to 400. And if I added those up, then let's see, 320 and 240 is 560, 660. 660 divided by 4 um, would give me my new mean. But if you notice, it used to be 60-80, now it's 240-80. It used to be 80-100, now it's 320-400. Uh, so you can see that they've spread out more. So the standard deviation would also go up by that factor of 4, which would be 80. Okay. Now, one topic that I don't think I've addressed enough is the topic of variance. We've hit it a little bit as we develop standard deviation but I just want to emphasize the difference between variance and standard deviation. So I've listed the standard deviation formula up here in two forms. The first form on the left here, this is your standard, standard deviation. And on the right is if you had frequencies, like in a frequency table where you had, say, 10 of one score and 3 of another score. Okay? So what I'm looking for you to understand is, Variance is the part of the standard deviation formula before you apply the square root. In other words, it's the guts of the radical, the innards of the radical. That is your variance, okay? So now let's calculate a variance and a standard deviation to really set up and emphasize the difference between the two. So complete the table, do that first using a little stop and start, and then We'll talk to you about exactly how you find the variance and the standard deviation out of the table. Go ahead, complete the table. Okay, so if we add up all the scores and divide by how many there are, that's how we get x bar, which is the mean. So 5 and 9 is 14, and 10 is 24, and 12 is 36, and 14 is 50. 50 divided by the 5 scores is 10, so my mean is 10. Now, Literally, the way we fill out these tables is we operate with particular columns. In this case, we're going to do the x column here minus the x bar column here. And I'll just fill it in every time. 5 minus 10, 9 minus 10, 10 minus 10, 12 minus 10, 14 minus 10. This one says take that previous column right here and square it. Now, if you subtracted and wrote negative 5, negative 1, 0, 2, 4, that's fine. I just wrote them in this column. Negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared, 0. Uh, 2 squared is 4. And 4 squared is 16. So if I add those up, I actually add up to 50. So the variance is the sum of this last column divided by how many scores there are, just like the average would be that. 
and I get 50 divided by 5 is 10. It is purely coincidence that works out to be the mean. It doesn't usually work that way. The standard deviation just takes whatever the variance is, the guts of the radical, which we just, here's the guts of the radical here with my le little red lasso, and then I divide by how many scores there are as part of the guts of the radical. 50 divided by 5 is 10. The standard deviation just takes the square root of that. So it's the square root of 10, which is 3.16. Okay? All right. So I, I just wanted to take a second to come back to the topic of variance and emphasize for you what the difference between variance and standard deviation is. If you ever get a question that asks about variance, just say, oh, it's the guts of the radical for standard deviation. So let me figure out what's inside the square root for standard deviation, figure all of that out. That's my variance. Then if I apply the square root, I get my standard deviation. All right. Next up, one question from the quiz. Um, I went over the quiz grades. The quiz grades are excellent, but there was one question that had slightly more missed than other questions. The wait time for a train in Babylon, New York has uniform probability. That's as soon as we hear uniform probability, that's the diagram of the rectangle. And it's pictured below. Find the probability that a passenger needs to wait between 10 and 15 minutes for a train. Okay, I want to emphasize uniform probability is so important in how we proceed and go about with this question. Okay, probability is the area in the red rectangle. So the area is going to be 1 30th because that's the width times. Now we're only doing the red rectangle because we don't want the piece that goes from 0 to 30. If we did that, it would be 1. And that makes sense because in a uniform distribution, the probabilities all add up to 1. In this case, we want to only do the area of the red rectangle. So that's 1 30th because that is the width times the length is going to be 15 minus 10. So that's 1 30th times 5, which is 5 30th, which is 1 6th. Okay? So those are all review types of questions. We did a solid review of Z scores. We did a solid review of a quiz question that I wouldn't say gave us a tremendous amount of difficulty, but a little bit of difficulty. And we did a little quick review on the differences between variance and standard deviation. The next video, we'll start today's lesson.